The Bible says, could he, this guy have risen? Really? What could have happened to him? Could someone have stolen his body away? What could have happened? Even Peter himself, after all the time, all the years, all the miracles, everything that the witness, still had unbelief. Hallelujah, Jesus. So I wonder sometimes, we come here, but still there's some kind of unbelief inside of us. There is some kind of wondering that we do. Is that true that it, they say, Pastor, the, Pastor, the, the preaching said, the word said this morning that God said he would do this. But I, I still, you know, wondering if it will really happen. When Jesus told them, they says, you know, I will be delivered unto the hands of civil men. After that day, I will rise again. They forgot completely. How many days? Just three days he left. Three days he left. Human beings. Ah. That's Jesus. So why is Pastor getting upset that they didn't remember what he told them last week? <laughs> I didn't even do any miracle like the one Jesus did, and yet. See this. And Peter went wondering. You have to believe. Because if you don't remember his words, you will still be trying to find the living among the dead. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't remember his word, you will still be trying to do what? Find the living among the dead. If you don't remember his promises, you will still be trying to find the living among the dead. If you don't remember what he said concerning your finances, if you don't remember what he said concerning your health, if you don't remember what he said concerning your life, if you don't remember, if you can't put it into remembrance, bring it back. Remind yourself. Even if the enemy is trying to take it away, remind yourself, recollect it. If you don't remember, you may be trying to find answers in the wrong place. You have to believe. You have to believe his word. You have to believe. Even as we are crying and shouting, he's alive, he's alive, he's alive. Do you know that some people still in the church today that still wondering, is it really true? <laughs> Hallelujah. Although we come, we sing. Is it really true that he's alive? Eh? Some people will come and bring a different teaching, a different doctrine tomorrow. And then suddenly you see them just switch like that. Just like that. Pew. You have to believe that he is alive. You have to believe that he is able to do what he said he will do. You have to believe that he is able to do what he promised you that he will do. You have to believe that he is coming back again. You have to believe that he is your God. You walk with God, you can never remain the same again. When you believe. When you believe your walk with him can never remain the same again. So ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you, you have to wake up your mind. You have to wake up your spirit, man, to believe. I'm saying when I said believe, I said believe. And that is why Paul prayed to the people in Ephesus. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 10. Paul prayed to the people, look at them, and said unto them, he said unto them in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10, he said unto them, he says, that I may know, someone say that I may know, I may know. that I may know, hallelujah, I'm oh, sorry, beg your pardon, Philippians, Philippians 3.10, Philippians 3.10, Philippians 3 verse 10. We are coming to Ephesians. It says that I may know him. Someone say know him. Know him. That I may do what? 
Now let's get this better. Let's get, let's get this understanding. That I may know, the Bible says that I may know him and what? That I may know him, not just know him. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. A lot, of in the a lot of us in the church, we know him. We've heard about him. We know that somebody called Jesus Christ. We know that there's somebody who died for our sin. We know that somebody is coming back again. That's knowing, right? But knowledge without application. Knowledge is power only when applied. I listen to me. Knowledge is power only what? When? Only when applied. So it's not good enough to just know. Now Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering be made conformable unto his death. That I may know him, not just know Jesus Christ. You can hear about him. A lot of us in church will hear him. But we need to know the power. We need to experience his fellowship. This fellowship of his death. That I may know him. And then in continuation, as he was praying in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians, Paul continued to pray for the church, chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 17. It says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Hallelujah. Amen. Someone say revelation. revelation. It's different from just knowing, you know. It's different from that I read it in the book or somebody said it to me. Paul knew the power. Paul knew the essence of knowing, not just knowing, but have a revealed knowledge. When you have a revealed knowledge, you don't need anyone to preach to you. Because it's a revealed knowledge. It's a Rema war. That's what it's called Rema war. It says that I may know him. Uh, it said that the Lord our God, Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. That your eyes of understanding may be enlightened. That ye may know what is the hope? That is a hope of his calling. Amen? Amen? He didn't just call you. That is a hope of his calling. You are not just called. That is a hope. That is a reason. That is an expectation. That is a result. That is a hope of his calling. You will experience it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. That you may know the hope. The hope of his calling. And what the riches, hallelujah, somebody. I don't know if you see what I'm saying. Riches. Riches of the glory. Of the his inheritance in the saints. Don't ever say you don't have, nobody left you anything anymore. Don't ever say that again. Don't ever say your parents didn't leave you any inheritance. Don't ever say anybody didn't leave you anything. You have greater, greater riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints. That is more than what anybody could leave for you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Unless you understand. Your eyes on understanding opens. Your spirit man opens. And you can see the hope of his calling. And the riches of his glory. Of the glory of his inheritance in the saint. That's the glory of his inheritance for you. And what is the exceeding greatness of the power to us all. Which believe according to his mighty power. The same power which he wrought in Christ Jesus. When he raised him from the dead. That same power. That raised Jesus Christ from the dead is available to us. But you need to understand. Paul desires. Paul wishes. You can see this is a heartfelt prayer. 
Lord, I just wish, oh my God, if anything in life that I even want or desire, that's what Paul is saying. That I don't need all this preaching, all these many, many words is not necessary. All this persuasion, ever says, I've not come to you with persuasion with the wise, wise words of men. All this persuasive word is not necessary. If only that God would open your eyes of understanding. That you yourself may see the riches of the glory of his inheritance in Christ Jesus. Also, if you would see that the same power that God wrought in Jesus Christ that raised him from the dead is also available. They went to the grave to spice up the dead. But alas, he is risen. I speak to you that your life will enjoy the power of resurrection. Even men and women will come to help you to spice up those areas. To cover it up. But resurrection power will come on it. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, him whom the Son has set free is free indeed. There's no reason to hide around, sneak around. You should walk with your heads up. Every child of God in this house has that privilege. It doesn't matter where you're coming from. Even if though you are here at some point in your lifetime, I was reading the scripture yesterday talking about how God says, I just want to forgive you, my people. I know your sins. I know, but I want to. He says, I will take them away like the cloud. Every child of God in this house has the opportunity to enjoy that grace. You will arise. Your life will arise in the name of Jesus. And the power of resurrection will continue to be with you. Follow you in all areas of your life. It says, for your shame, I will give you double. Every area where you have been experiencing shame, let double the power of resurrection. Let it come upon it today. Every area that you cannot talk to people about it, you can't even tell the next person, the next dog, even your husband, your wife don't even know about it. It's so shameful. You're just trying to cover it up all the time. God is going to raise them up today. In the name of Jesus, resurrection power will do that which no man can do. And your life will never remain the same again. In the mighty name of Jesus. Put your hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ. And let's celebrate him. He is alive. Hallelujah.